Bonjour, James here. Welcome to another edition of Cafe de Rene. I'm joined once again by the Star Show, Mr. Renee Dupree. And Renee, we are joined by someone, and I'm just going to say it right now. She was my biggest crush growing up in the Ruthless Aggression era. Good morning. Please introduce her. I think she was a lot of young boys' crush growing up. Uh, yeah. She was, the, she was one of the coolest female wrestlers, uh, performers on the SmackDown roster, in my opinion. Uh, You're all so smart. Dawn Marie. Hi. How's everything uh, going? Well, uh, it's beautiful up here in Canada. It's about 35 degrees Celsius, which is like, uh, what, like 95 Fahrenheit or something. So. Really? Yeah. It's Where hot are you here now? Too. Was that? Where are you? I said it's hot here. Where are you? I'm in New Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll never leave Jersey. It's like part of me. It's the only place I'm accepted for my craziness. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. There's no place like home, right? No matter where oh you go, God. you just want to go home. Yeah. All right. So I haven't seen you since like 2000, maybe five-ish. Yeah, probably. That's when I left in 2005. Or I didn't leave. I got kicked out. Oh, <laughs> you just blew it out, did you? Oh. Well, we're going to get into pregnant. that after. Well, let's get into that after. But I mean, okay, so for all the, the fans there who, who know of you, but maybe don't know your roots and how you got started, like, give me the whole nine, the whole journey. Oh, my. The whole journey. It's a long one. Um, well, I actually, I'm going to tell you the whole thing. I came from like a really broken home and I was literally homeless at 17 years old. A lot of people don't know this. I was homeless at 17, living in my car, like just trying to make ends meet, figuring it out. And this is back, you know, I'm an old lady. I'm going to be 52 years old. So you're talking about 87, 1987, right? So this is like the prime of Motley Crue, right? Oh, yeah. All the hair bands, right? Okay. Van Halen, Bon Jovi, all of them. So anyway, I was really trying to make things work. Um, and I wound up in a strip joint. I was a stripper way back when, back when it wasn't cool like it is now. <laughs> like, like you wore your hat and your glasses and you parked around the corner and you walked in like this because you had shame. But what else am I going to do, right? I had to make ends meet. I had to put food in my mouth. So then I did that, but I never got into like the drugs and the alcohol. I just used it for money, right? Because oh. that's just never was my thing. Yeah. So then I went to, and I put myself through school went to NYU, but business school, finished that, got a job in Manhattan. I was a director of international real estate firm at wow. this time when I was done. I was 22. Mm -hmm. But between that, when I was going to school and dancing, I was also wanted to become an actress. So I studied in New York. I did all that kind of good stuff. I did it all. So then I left dancing, obviously. I had a great job. I was overlooking St. Patrick's Cathedral. I was a director of a firm at like 22 or 23 years old. It was crazy. My professor took me right out of school. So I was miserable. I was miserable. I would literally cry on my way to work. Cry. I was like, I'm not, a, I'm not an office person. Right. I'm not a desk person. I can't do this. So, you know, but being why I started from where I came from, I didn't know anybody. Like, I thought that's what success was, right? Success was what you see on TV back then. So it was like, you know, you go to school, you, get, you know, you go get married, you have kids, you have a house, white picket fence, like that's supposed to be happy. I was not happy, even though I didn't have some of it. And I knew I did not want to do this forever. There's no way. So at that time, I was finishing up some stuff, um, like I did some modeling and acting prior to this, this time frame. And I met a gentleman in the go go bar that used to do, like, you ever back? I don't know if you guys had it in Canada, like Spencer's, like those cheesy photos, those cheesy. Um, posters with the girl with the corn stalk. Yeah, and the yes, yes, we had that. Yeah. Okay, I used to do those. 
back oh, wow. when. Uh -huh. So I had a bunch of them left over. I had left my acting and everything behind because I wasn't getting anywhere and I had to be a grown up at this point. Yeah. And I ran into him at the bar. It was towards like my last few days at the bar. Yeah. And I told him I won't be around anymore. And this is why. And he said, well, would you mind signing up what you have? Because I do conventions and I want to sell them. I said, sure, come on over. So he comes over, I'm signing it up. And as you can tell, I like to babble. So he starts telling me how he used to do stuff um, like on the indies where he would help promote. Okay. Right? I don't even know what this is. Right. So mm. it was in New Jersey, he said. Bunch of stuff. He didn't run shows. He just helped, like, I don't know what he did. He did little things for people. So then I was like, oh, I love wrestling when I was a kid. Those were like my happy days. Like, that's why I equate it with happy moments in my life with my family, like younger. Right. So I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. I would love to do that. Um, I was like, oh, I could be like Miss Elizabeth. Really, Dawn? Shut up. Right. <laughs> Shut up, Dawn. That's <laughs> so stupid. So <laughs> and then he goes, he like, he took me serious. And I was not being serious at all. About a week later, he calls me up at home and he's like, I got you booked on a show. I was like, what? What are you talking about? He said, well, you said that you would love to do it. So I called in some favors and cousin Luke said he'll bring you in on one of his shows. Oh, this is Bushwacker Luke? No, cousin Luke. Um, cousin Luke. With the, with the um, overalls and oh, from back in the day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cousin okay. Luke and who was that? Elmer, right? Was it Elmer? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm like, Elmer. Okay. Back. That's way I, back. Yeah, yeah. I'm old. I'm old. Yeah. So, so then I was like, uh, Jonathan, uh, no way. I, I was only kid. Like I was just talking to talk. Like I always right. do. Right. And he said, "Well, I thought you were serious, so I called in a favor. Can you just do this one, so I'm not a jerk?" Right. Okay. So I put together this little character. I show up and. It was in New Jersey, and I'm managing Snooker against oh, Tony God. Atlas. Oh, wow. Now, I've been removed from wrestling for decades at this time, but probably like a decade because I'm only 22 at this time, 23. Right. But those were my moments, my very few moments of happy days with my family. Yeah, well, so, like, so now I'm like, oh, my God. This is crazy. So I right? imagine Snooker was like the top, top guy during this time too, like when you were 12 or whatever, right? Yeah, like he was oh, the man. Right, right, right. He was the man jumping. Like, and Tony Atlas, like it was like, yeah. you know, I mean, figure, okay. So I had been about 10, 9, 10. Yeah. So you're looking at 79, 80, like 78 to like 82. Right. That's when I watch these moments with my family, yeah. right? So, you know, that's the heyday. So I'm like, holy shit, it's snuck up. Can I curse? Yeah, I can do whatever curse. you want. Right? Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, it's snuck up. Oh shit. Yeah. Then I was like, see Tony Atlas. I'm like, yeah. what the f is going on here? Right. So then... I oh, I have a picture of standing on Tony Atlas' face from that day oh, with my Jesus high heels. Christ. I was broken in really fast. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay, please elaborate on this story. How how did he confront you and say, would you mind? You don't know about his foot up? fetish? Well, I know about his foot fetish, but I want to know how he, like, asked you to stand on his face and what was your what were you thinking? I was just like, it's Tony Atlas. You want me to stand on your face? I'll stand on your face. I'm not sitting <laughs> on it, right? I'm standing on it. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I Honestly, you know me. I just go with it. Yeah. Whatever. But I have that picture and I adore it. I love it. 
Wow. So I go out with with snooker, and mm. I swear to God, like, do you ever have you ever see on TV where they have those moments where they everything slows down? And it's like the sequence, this big huge epiphany, what yeah. the heck moments? Oh, yeah. Like all these decades later. I could tell you what that room smelled like. I could tell you how many rows there were. I could tell you exactly like, look, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah. I could tell you every nuance of that room because when I walked out that curtain, yeah. I stopped and I was like, oh. I didn't even walk down the aisle. I was like, oh. and everything stopped. Right. So it was the hooked. craziest shit. You were hooked right then and there, right? Like it just stopped and I was like, holy shit, this is what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. It was just it. like that. I've never had a moment like that. It was just like this moment of clarity and I just felt at home. Right. It probably had a lot to do with, these were my very few happy days when I was younger and I kind of was leaping back into it, sure. whatever. But that's how it started. Right. So I did my show. I... um you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, left. I did a show with that next week with Chris Ford at some place. And then that Friday, I quit my job. Wow. I quit my job. I was a director of international real estate firm. It's like 23, 23. So you just get up my job. Job. I went back to the strip joint. So I call up my boss. Like I got up that day and I was crying. I'm going to go to work. I'm like so unhappy. And all I could think about was this peace that I felt instantly. Like this just, this is where I belong feeling. And I didn't never had that. Right. So I'm like, it can't, like, I don't even know what made me make, I was so instinctual. I woke up that morning, I was crying. I didn't want to go to the train station to go to New York. I called up my boss and I said, I'm sorry, I'm not coming in. And she said, what do you mean? I said, I'm just not coming in anymore. Uh, thank you for all your opportunities. I appreciate it. I know it's just not my path. I don't know why. I just know it isn't. Oh, that's ballsy. So she says to me, Dawn, I mean, I had a corner office overlooking St. Patrick's Cathedral. I could watch the parades go down the street. You don't understand. Like that, I, I made it. <laughs> right? But when all the no, odds were you against weren't happy. Me, you weren't happy. I wasn't so you happy. Yeah. No. So I, she said, Dawn, you know, I, I love you like a daughter. I've had you for years as my student. Let's talk about it when you come in. I said, Pat. Thank you for all you've done for me. And I'm going to be a real shit. But I ain't coming in because you're going to talk me out of it. Wow. I said, she's like, well, what about all your licenses and your books and your, your catalogs and your contacts? I said, throw them out. Wow. Throw them out. I'm never going to need that diploma again. I'm never going to leave those licenses again. I'm never going to use those contacts again. All I know is like, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't come in. I can't because you're going to talk me out of it. And I, I have to do this. Never talk to her again. She's probably pissed, right? So that was it. I called all the bars up. I went back to dancing. And I started traveling. I got into little groups. I started doing indie shows. Oh, for wrestling. Okay. And I would travel anywhere from Michigan to Florida by myself for 25 bucks. Wow. I didn't care. I didn't care. I just knew that, okay, if I work this many, if I dance this many days, then I can take off this many days and afford to go on the road and do this. That makes me feel so wonderful. So I did that. Like, and I would drive through and I drove, you know, we drove back then. Right. And we didn't have map quest. We used the paper. Right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I would drive through the night because I was scared to stop by myself. And then I would sleep at the hotels during the day. And then I would drive through the night to come home. That's wow. what I used to do. So I did that for about a year and a half. I also got involved with 
We used to call it the Casati train. Do you ever hear of Tom Casati? I heard the name, yes. Never met him. Tom, Tom Casati was a gentleman that um, I probably would not have made it without him. Mm. There's a couple of people that I know I would not have made it without their support in some way. Mm. So Tom used to have a little group of us. He had some money, you know, like the money guy. Um, and he then put us in this little group and then he would transport us to different shows and pay us wow. to do shows. So I was really lucky. I got a lot of experience. Well, I did the traveling by myself for about maybe nine months, 10 months. And then I got lucky and fell into this. Right. And then I did that for about another year. Now, let me tell you who my crew was. I was on the road with Buddy Landell. Wow. I was managing Buddy Landell over and over and over. I had Missy Hyatt, I which know. broke me in hard. And is right. one of my dearest friends today, because I, I mean, it's just the weirdest relationship ever. I'll tell yeah. you Missy Hyatt stories. And I love her. She's my, <laughs> mm, love her. But and she'll tell you, I was broken in hard. Trust okay. me. Right. <laughs> and um, the Headbangers uh, and, and um, Tom Brandy. Wow. And then we would have other people come in, but that was our every week. Wow. Now I managed Buddy Landell. Okay. And how do you not learn from right. Buddy, right? right? Great worker. Forget. Not only a worker in the ring, but a worker in the back, right? Oh, can you see me? Okay. Yeah, so I know I'm going on. You don't even have to ask me questions. I'm just going to talk. So no, that is great. <laughs> A lot of people don't know these stories. So no, it's perfect. Yeah, good. Buddy, the, why I was always different than a lot of the girls in the business is because of how I was broken in. Right. Right? One, right. I, I didn't sleep with someone to get there. Da, 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 da. Those were the stupid mistakes I made after I made it. <laughs> then, <laughs> but before, it was merit on my own. I didn't have a stupid brain then. So then I, um, I would travel. And then I was with Buddy and I was like kind of assigned to Buddy and Buddy made me understand what respect was like the respect. It, it you know, it's a whole nother lesson that you you're given this business. You're not, you don't learn it. Right. But I was very fortunate. I was given the business. Buddy Landell gave me the business. Snooka gave me business, you know, and I was educated right from the beginning. Yeah. So Buddy used to say to me, you can't go in the ring. Why not? You didn't earn it yet. Wow. I yeah. said, what do you mean? I didn't, I, I'm, I'm, what, what? Yeah, I'm a stripper girl from Jersey. Like, what? Right. He said, when you learn how to work the outside and you, and I feel you've learned what it means to respect the inside. Then and only then will you ever come in this ring with me. That's crazy, right? Can you imagine saying that to some of the girls today or boys? They would cry. Oh, definitely, yeah. They try to <laughs> like, cancel you. You try to get canceled. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay. You know, I didn't like it, but I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just see where this goes, right? So I learned how to work the outside oh. first. And I had the greatest people teaching me. I had Captain Luz. I had the Sherry Martells coming up. Wow. I had Buddy Landell. I, you know, I had Missy Hyatt. I had, I had so many amazing people that I learned from along the way. Yeah. Okay. So. Now, finally, I'm allowed in the ring. So now I'm like, oh, I'm allowed in the ring. This is all, I was so excited. It was like getting a promotion. Right. But that taught me the base of like, every time you step in that ring, realize you had to earn it and that someone had to give it to you. No one, you didn't just get it. You didn't just go buy it. You didn't just go look. It was like, it meant something every single time you walked into that ring. Yeah. So I think with that, 
with that as my core and my base, like everything else just kind of always fell in place because I always followed those rules. And there was a plethora of rules, you know. Okay, well, um, let's, let's go into like ECW. When did that big break for you happen? So we did that for a while. And I did that for about mm, 95, I think I started ECW. So maybe it was like two and a half years. I was on the indies. Right. And now I'm older, right? I'm 25. Usually girls are done by 25. I'm just walking in the door. Right. So I get a call. This is how it happened. Um, Tammy had just left WWE or, you know, when she was having her problems, right? Her right, drug right. problems that made her leave. They're like, either you go to rehab or you leave, right? right. So she came to ECW with Chris. Okay. Now I live in New Jersey. Philly is a hop away. Okay. Okay. Um, Terry Reynolds was at that time negotiating her contract with Vince. Right. right. And she was supposed to come in against Tammy. Right. But they made the deal last minute. She's not going. Uh... So Baba had seen me at a Jersey All Pro show a while back. Paul had seen me at a Jersey All Pro. They're like, just call this girl. She's right here call her, have her come in. They needed someone to be fodder for, for Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> so I went in there. So I, Bubba calls me. Uh, I want you to come down here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. When? He goes, you need to be here in two hours. Wow. If you want it, get here. Yeah. If you're not here, then you're not serious. You know Bubba, right? Right, 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 right. I was like, okay, now I'm an hour away. So I have an hour to go. <laughs> Get all your stuff ready, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, right? So I'm like, okay. And I show up to the arena by myself. I was scared to death because you hear all the stories, you know, which are yeah. true. But you walk in and there it was. Now, remember too, this was in 95 where the girls weren't getting naked all the time. Right. The big thing was Sable had the gloves on her boobies. Right. That was like, what? The yeah, business yeah, is yeah. going to be forever. And oh, and believe me, I was 14. I remember. <laughs> so I'm there and Bubba comes up to me and says, this is what we want you to do. And Paul tells me, we want you to get, you know, uh, you know get into a cat fight or something. They're going to give me a flip over. And she's going to take your clothes off. <laughs> what? Right. Tell me why. No one knows I'm a stripper because back then it also was not accepted in wrestling. You got fired. Not like now. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. 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 That's a whole nother story. Wow. So, so um, this happened. And I'm like, holy shit. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then all I kept hearing Buddy Landell in my head saying, you're not paid to have an opinion. You're paid to do the best job you can. Right. You don't right. question it. You do it. Shut up and do as you're told, right? Shut up. Do what you're told. You don't have an opinion. You're here to do a job. You do it. Whatever it is. Yeah. And that's all I kept hearing. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to be bad if I give him a hard time about this. So Bob is standing there looking at, well, do you have a problem with this? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I have a problem with this at all. I'll be happy to do it. Yeah. So we do it. Um, I went out with Lance, which I adore Lance. Um, it was only supposed to be a one shot deal. Right. Uh -huh. That week after that TV, he calls me up, but Bubba again. We need. To, uh, do, are you interested in coming for three more shots in Mississippi? Um, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. He's like, okay, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He tells me the arenas, whatever, and he's like, if you want it, I'll see you there. And I go, well, okay, but how do I get? I, I don't. Is it going to be a ticket for me? Is it like, I don't know. Right. right? right. I was like, you see that? Like, I don't know. He's like, what? 
you get one TV show and you think that you're something special that you deserve a ticket, you know, blah, blah, right? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh shit, what did I just say? And he goes, if you want it, you'll be at that arena. I'll, and he goes, you know, like, let me see. Well, Dawn got her ass to Mississippi on Friday. <laughs> I walked in and I did another three shows. That was it. You know, and I wasn't getting paid anything. It probably cost me $400 back then to go there. Because right. I, had, I had to pay my travel. I had to pay my hotels. I had to pay, what, what am I getting paid? 75 bucks to go down there? Right. Right. So this was, you said this was 95? Mm-hmm. 95. Now, you mentioned also you were working with Tammy. You, you know, she said she had, you know, substance abuse problems and stuff. How was it working with her at that point in time? Was it difficult? You know, I love Tammy. Yeah. I love Tammy. I've always had a spot for her. You know, I was always kind of like her older sister in a sense. Um, you know, it's no secret. She has some demons. Yes. And up until recently, they only really hurt herself, not others. Yes. Um. All I knew is during that time, you know, because I didn't have a relationship with her. All I knew is I needed to keep her looking sober, make her look like a million dollars in the ring. Yeah. And as long as I kept that, I was going to continue to be asked to come in. Right. Right. So you felt, then, a lot of pre- you felt a lot of pressure on yourself, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so. But it also created an amazing bond with her to this day. There's like a safety, like, I don't know, like what, it's not that I talk to her all the time. I don't, uh, maybe a couple times a year, but it just seems like whenever she's at those crossroads is when she'll call me. And I feel very flattered over that because I know that's because she feels safe. Yeah. I always kept her safe. And I'm flattered, like, I, that makes me feel wonderful, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, um, Anyway, so we did this and, you know, it just took off. And then they loved the interaction between me and Lance yeah. because Lance was, you know, he's world-class. He's yeah. a great talker, but there's not much um, animation, right? right? So now you have me where I'm just all over the place. It just kind of fit. Right, right. And then that's how it started. And then um, tell you about... You were, with EC- you were with ECW right until the very end, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. So, and that's the story you're going to love. You're going to love this, so you're going to fall on your ass. So, Paul gave me a contract. He's like, Dawn, now no one knew I was, in da- I was a dancer. Nobody. Oh. This is back. Remember when Chastity, they found out she did that porn? And she yes. got chastised, like, no pun intended, like, just thrown out of the business. and Yes. Like, it wasn't really well received when you were on that other side of the fence. Let's just put right. it that way, right? Well, Not that he's a porn, but even in ECW, because I mean, Paul brought in like Jasmine St. Clair and Jenna Jameson. That was like, after. That was years oh, later. After. Oh, uh huh. But during this time, I mean, like I guess Kimona, she had her thing, but it just wasn't really. It was like I needed to keep it quiet. Like it needed to not be discussed or talked. Like I hit it. So Paul calls me. He's like, Dawn, he goes, "Um, I want to sign you. I'm like, okay. Now, mind you, it's two o'clock in the morning when you get this phone call. (laughs) (laughs) So I I run out to him. He's like, no, maybe one o'clock. Two o'clock, I met him in the city. So I drive into Manhattan and we're sitting down and and he goes, okay, Dawn, well, this is what's going on. This is what I want to do what do I got to do to have you sign exclusive just with me? And I looked at him and, and I don't know, for some reason I said, I go, take me out of the bar. And he looked at me just like you just did. <laughs> He's like, what? I go, take me out of the bar. I don't want to be a stripper anymore. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, what's the bare minimum you need to get out of the bar? I came up with a number. He said, okay, starting this week, that's what you get paid. Wow. Yeah. I no. will forever be grateful 
Now, that man a, took me out of the bar. Okay. Were you, a, were you a victim of the infamous balance checks? So I'll tell you all about that. That's so everything started going and da da da. Lance was Lance had just left for um WCW. WCW. Yeah. You know, they were kind of talking about bringing me in with them, but like I I'm a very loyal person. Like I'm a very I grew up on the street. You're loyal. It don't matter what the outcome is, you're loyal. Yeah. So I really never kind of pursued it, but I called that weekend. I went up to Paul. I knocked on, I said, come here, Paul, I need to talk to you. He goes, okay, when are you leaving? Because all the checks were bouncing. Right. Right? right. So he thought I was like, okay, fuck you. I'm leaving. And I pulled him in an office and I was like, he's like, when are you leaving? I go, oh, I'm not. He goes, you're not. I go, no, I'm not leaving. I said, but I want you to know why I'm not leaving. I said, I'm not, because I very well can. My, my contract was already voided out because of all the bounce checks, right? Wow. So I said, I'm not leaving, not because I drank your Kool-Aid. I'm not leaving because I'm a person of my word and I will forever be grateful for what you did to help me when I needed it. Yeah. And I said, I have another year left on my contract. I will stay with you to the, to the end. Wow. In a year, we, it may be different, but I gave you my word and I'm going to keep my word till the end, period. Wow. And he was like, okay. And I stayed. Dang. But I got to tell you, Paul took very good care of me Dude. because I was loyal, like as a human to him. I didn't care. It wasn't about the wrestling it was deeper with us because of how it began you know you, 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 i was from the street you took me off the street you took me out of the bar like there's a loyalty to that yeah. right it's a whole different so he's my i imagine person. I, to this I, day I, to this day he's my person like when i i talk to him often he's my person like when i need to be told i'm an asshole he'll be the one to tell me he'll tell me when i'm right wrong or indifferent and I know it's coming from love. So let, he must have obviously put in a really good word for you when it came time to go to WWE, right? Yeah. He did. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have the skills because at that time, the girls were learning how to wrestle. Mm. Yes. Right? So I had to learn how to wrestle. I was 29. <laughs> really 29 30 yeah when i met you i was already in my 30s i was 18 yeah oh my god it's so dirty isn't it <laughs> maybe for you i was in heaven <laughs> yay <laughs> so yeah no i was i was 30 i was in my 30s when i met you okay. when i went to vince eventually i was in my 30s wow yeah so I had to learn how to wrestle. They would not have talked to me. They didn't want to look at me. You know, also Paul made to put in a good word and wanted me because he knows my work ethic and I would always try my best. But at the same time, I was Paul's girl. So that also came with a big X over me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It went both ways, right? right? Right. So I did, Simon Diamond took, me, I would go to Long Island two, three times a week to learn how to wrestle with Mikey Whipwreck and oh, Simon okay. Diamond. Okay. Every week, a couple of times a week, I would be so beat up and I'd be driving home, like Long Island from to my house, at least two, two and a half hours each way. And I just right. all, all the time, all the, like constantly. So I finally learned how to wrestle enough that I could put something together, my VHS tape, you like that? My VHS tape I sent in. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent that in. Right. And I had to get some promos. I had those done. Um, Mary Kate, you know Mary Kate? She's from Jersey. She was like a, photo a girl that was always around photographer. Uh, between okay. her and George Napolitano, the both of them 
did two separate photo shoots with me so I could have the right photos to send in. And I sent them in with my tape and Paul walked it in. But I had to have a, at least six minute match, bell to bell, that was tight. Right, right. It's hard, especially when like, I'm a girl and I'm in my, I'm almost 30. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? So, right. Um, so that happens and I get my chance and it sucked because I had the ex, your, girl, your Paul's girl. Now I gave them everything they wanted. Yeah. Everything they wanted. Right. So I get the call from Johnny Ace. And hey John, how you doing? <laughs> he offers for me to go down to developmental. Now, is this, was this in uh, OVW or HWA? OVW. OVW. Okay. OVW. Okay. Not that I'm against it, but I was now in my 30s. I owned my own home. I, you know, I, I, I wasn't in a place in my life where I could just Get up go. And leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I, I just right. can't. I had responsibilities at this point. And I was like, are you kidding me? I worked all this time and now I got to say no? Right. It killed me. Yeah. So, I mean, after a lot of turmoil, I ended up turning it down. Wow. Now, what year is this? This was in... 2001. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. 2000, 2001. Right. And I mean, I'm sure they weren't expecting that because everyone was chomping at the bits. But I didn't yeah, do it. There was nowhere else WCW. to work. There was nowhere else to work. Nowhere. Right? WCW yeah. was closed. ECW was closed. There was no TNA yet. There was no, like, there was nothing. Like, NWA was still like, on its really like you know it wasn't really yeah. as much as i see like a little bit now a little bit more but like and i was like i'm sorry i can't right. i can't have, I have responsibilities you know i'm not a young kid anymore i can't just do this yeah but they did come back and offer me a contract and they offered me a, a full, you know they said come on in and we're going to try you out yeah so i went in and i went in against dusty's girl when a dusty girl, I'm like, come on, tell me that ain't intimidating. I learned in a year, like whatever, you kind of pat, patch them together. And here I have one of Dusty's best girls. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, huh? It was Dusty's girl. I don't even remember her name. Right. She didn't stay. They didn't, they didn't keep her. But you know, in my mind, I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me, right? I did it. We went in. I wound up staying. They gave me a gig. I tore my I tore my ligament in my right ankle during my first weekend there in tryout. Oh, shit. and yeah, and I remember them going, uh, Bubba, and them like, you know, don't don't go in there, or whatever. Bubba was really kind of testing me more. He wasn't really sincere when he said, "Don't go." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, so you know, you're just not going to do anything. You're not going to go." In. I'm like, "No." No, of course I am. I walked right into the, the, you know, the guy, what was his name? The therapist. I'm like, I need you to tape this up. I mean, I need you to tape it, tape it, tape it, please. And don't tell anyone. Is that Larry? Larry? Larry, Larry. San Antonio. Like, please. Yeah. So I know you don't know me, but I've been working really, really hard. And my, my, my it was like this, it was blown. It was, I tore a ligament. Wow. And he wrapped it and wrapped it and I iced the shit out of it. No. And I hid and did it and I worked. Yeah. <laughs> and then they gave me the gig. Sweet. It's crazy, right? I know. Because I met you, I met you like in 2002. It was on SmackDown. And uh, I think I was in OVW and we all went backstage. Yeah. Probably. Was yeah. I nice to you? Yes, but I was intimidated by your beauty. Thank you. <laughs> so I got a question for you, Don. Who was your favorite tag partner? You. <laughs> I didn't even have to look up, right? Right, right. Yeah, I remember we were doing that thing. I think it was on the house shows. It was me and you versus Tori and Cena every night. Remember that? Yeah, Cena. Yeah. 
Can you believe it? Believe Tina, what? my God, 20 years. I know. Jesus Christ, been a long time. Yeah, I, I remember, remember him on his tryout match with his little oh, really? mohawk and his green and white shorts, right? Yeah. And right. I was looking at the curtain, looking, because, you know, whenever I was a good looking guy, I had a watch, right? So I'm like this. <laughs> and then, you know, Johnny Ace and JR were like right here behind me somewhere watching the monitor. You know, I'm a girl. I don't know what they're talking about. Right. So I was listening and I'm watching. And, you know, right away, you know, Cena had something like, you knew it. You know what I mean? I'm sure you saw that. It was like, you know. Yeah. So it's so funny because I said to him, he came through, we talked to them and I go, I'm looking through the curtain. I go, hey kid, come here. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I go, listen, you didn't hear this from me, but these are all the things they said. You got wow. something. I go, you wow. got something. And I go, okay, bye. <laughs> and, I started, I just, <laughs> and it was so funny because me and Cena became so close after that because, you know, but I was an old lady. I called him kid because I was, 12, 15 years older than him, you know, so. Oh, so let's talk know. about your time. Well, you mentioned right at the beginning that, you know, you got uh, booted out. You want to get into that and talk about that a little bit or would you rather leave it alone? No, it's fine. I mean, I can't talk about a lot of the details, but that was part of my lawsuit. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it but, was basically you got, you got pregnant, right? Yeah. I was pregnant. I got pregnant. It was planned. My, my fiance at the time, you know, I was getting older. I was coming up. I had my lap, I had my contract. I had another year, year and a half. And, um, it was like either I got pregnant or I was never going to have kids. Right. I was going to be stuck on the road. Like it was like, and I was going through this really hard time in my life because I wanted to have a family. I never had it. So it was really important to me. So it was, but then yeah, here, this is my career. And this is really important to me. What do you do? Mm. I even looked into surrogates back then, thinking about doing that because I was like, well, I can't ruin my body. I, I need this for work. I, I looked at all different avenues. So anyway, I ended up, I, I, I got pregnant. Um, I told them on a Tuesday, Friday, I was done. Wow. Well, Friday, they sent me home. Like, they didn't put me back on the road. Now, mind you, all those years, I was in the wrestling business, right? Yeah. I probably only missed two weekends in all those years. Because, you know, it's all about spots, right? You're not there. Yeah. Someone's going to come in and take your spot. Yeah. yeah. Two weekends, ever. I was on the road always, yeah. never took off. Right. Like, missed everything in life. And then they were like, oh, uh, we're going to keep you home this weekend. I'm like, okay. And then it came two weeks, then three weeks. And then they weren't going to put me on the ECW re uh, reunion show. They took me off of that, which oh. I was like, oh, hell no, you're not going to do that to me. Right. And I, I got a lawyer. No. At the same time, they were like, well, we don't have anything for you right now. And so Johnny Ace had called me that morning and told me that. And he's like, Don, Don. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm sorry, we're going to have to let you go because we just, creative just don't have anything right now. And I go, well, just be honest. I said, I'm a raging slut. I'll do anything you ask me to do, like, you know, in the ring. Right. You don't have a storyline for me. I'm pregnant. Whose baby is it? Right. That's like, true. Like, let's be serious. My character was so maniacal and slutty and this and that. Yeah. Right? Right. Sure. And not only that, I was in the business for so long, I could commentate. I could be in and out. I could be on the outside. I could be an a interviewer. Sure. I could be a backstage story. Or guess what? You could have sent me home, have my baby, and then come back. Yeah. Right? But 
there's those little contracts we sign with every clause in the world that's can take it away for any reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, well, I had, so two law I had two law firms. Wow. Yeah. Gloria Allred wanted my case. Really? Yeah. I talked to Gloria many a times. Yeah. Uh, and the only reason why she could not take my case is because she didn't have privileges in Connecticut. Right. They got that thing in Connecticut. They but always she did. was salivating over it. Because you got to think about this. At the time, I was the first woman to ever get pregnant in the industry. While really? under contract. Wow, okay. And at that time, I was like one of the longest running women at that time. Okay. And I'm so, gone. Yeah. What, are you what are you telling your staff? Don't get pregnant? Right. But yet you'll send your guys home to be with their wife when they're having children. Well, that changed because at one point in time, they wouldn't do that either. Right? I know, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Right. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't sit back. I mean, at that time, I had Nancy Grace calling me, Geraldo, all those big, huge talk shows. They wanted to talk to me. I just kept telling them, no, 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 no. I'm going to solve my business, my business, because I don't believe in exposing a business because that's how I was taught. Right, right. Right? Right. And like, I could just hear like, you know, you, you do your business behind the curtain. You don't do it in front of the curtain, right? right? So that's just always how I did my business. Always. I got a question for you. Do you keep up with like any of the wrestling news and gossips that's going on? I mean, if you're on social media, it's kind of hard not to like read an article or something, right? If it trickles in and I see it, then, then I see it. But I got to okay. be honest with you. I divorced the business for so many years. Yeah. I divorced it. And you know who gave me that advice? Who? Lisa Morelli, Ivory. Ivory. Yeah. Yeah. When I was leaving and I was really having a hard time with the transition. Yeah. I happened to run into her or something and, and she was like, Dawn, the only way I was able to get out was I had to divorce the business. She goes, don't watch it. Don't talk to it. Don't be friends with it. Don't nothing it. You have to become your own person again outside of wrestling Good and advice. i did that i did it um for many years matter of fact my kids didn't even know i was a wrestler until the babysitter's daughter told them wow <laughs> wow they were like seven yeah yeah i i just know it was the boy not even watching it now well, i, I can't I got a question for you since you're you were a female wrestler slash performer. What's your thoughts on all this uh sexual misconduct stuff going on with Vince McMahon and the higher ups? And you don't have to answer this if you don't want you. Did you ever see that or experience that when you were there? Um, it's so funny <laughs> because um I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm not surprised. surprised. I don't think anybody who worked there is, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I used to say this, I'd be like, why doesn't anyone hit on me? What's wrong with me? <laughs> I the one day. I'm like, you know, life would be a little easier if someone would just hit on me. And he goes, right. no, they know you're too smart. You're just, they're, they're, they don't want to fuck with you. And I was like, right. oh, fuck. You know? But no, I do know for a fact that shit had happened because there were a couple of young ladies there was one actually that I know for a fact had come to me for advice because something uh, was, was being approached very hard wow. and it was very uncomfortable. Wow. So I do know for a fact, and she wound up leaving. She's like, uh, it was like during those diva search, one of those diva search girls. And so, but you know, I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, you hear about it all out. You always hear about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I even said to Paul recently, I said, Paul, come on, come on. Now it's everybody. Why not me? <laughs> He's like, oh, God, stop. <laughs> but like, I compare it almost to like the Harvey Weinstein situation where you have a very powerful man who's in charge of your career. You know? I mean, I'm making a joke about it. I'm not, I don't think it was right. I'm making a big goofball about it. Um, 
I've been in those situations. Right. Like not, I did, wasn't in it in wrestling, but when I was in the entertainment business before it, and when I was an actress, multiple right. times right. put into a very scary situation where you don't know if you're getting out. Wow. Okay. I had someone once, I was in San, uh, Santa Barbara. And I was like in this guy's house for like two days, three days. I had like, no way of getting, like, he didn't have me locked down, but I had no way of getting, I had, I, I had nobody out there. So was this like a director or producer or something? Yeah, this is back when the Titanic was getting produced. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 it was a friend of a friend. Yeah. I was working with a promoter, a, a agent out here. He's dead a long time ago. And he said, my friend in Santa Barbara, I'm vouching. I mean, you know, he vouched for him. Everything. I was young and stupid, looking with my head up in the clouds. I was young, so yeah. my 20s, early 20s. Yeah. And I flew out there to meet with him because I trusted right. my, my agent. Right. Now, meanwhile, I was supposed to be put up in a hotel for the Titanic that was being cast and all that. Well, I get picked up at the airport and he brings me to his house in Santa Barbara. And he kept you like, what, hostage for two days? I was there for, yeah, I was there for about three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do anything with him, but he made it very clear that if I did. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And Maybe you know, I, 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 I know I make jokes. Well, this is not, not a, a nice about. place to be. Right. It's, it's uh, not no. a nice place. No. So I do what I have experienced it, and it's not a nice place to be. It's the grading, it's the moralizing, it makes you feel like, you know, why do I work so hard when that's all it is? Right. But but I did get away. I I, I wanted up, I was friends with um Remember Cavaricci jeans back in the day? Oh, you're young. You probably don't know about Cavaricci jeans. Cavaricci's, they're like this big, huge company back then. And I knew his son and he was in LA and I finally got in touch with him and he sent for someone to come get me. Uh, and I stayed with him until my flight back. Yeah. But it's crazy. Have you written a book, Don? <laughs> Everybody asks me that when I start telling them stories, because they're like, what? Well, no, just your life is so fascinating, like even aside from wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been a long journey, you know? Now yeah. I'm a nurse. I love it. You know, I'm a nurse. Oh, so now, tell right? me about that. So how long have you been yeah. in that, that profession? Oh, my God. I've been a nurse now for six years. Okay. Yeah, I was a COVID nurse right from day one, walking okay. in with knowing nothing no gear nothing i mean i've had covid three times already oh my god Are you yeah okay? yeah and i i um i walk i yeah i was one of those ones that those nurses that showed up non-stop non-stop a did a lot of them quit mm-hmm. over it and just watching people die that like i love long term because i love the relationships like, I yeah. like that relationship, right? Yeah. So I do a lot. Of, I'm always a long-term geriatric kind of nurse. I love them. Right? Yeah. I, you know, I make them laugh all day long doing stupid stuff. So, you know, you create this relationship with them. And that's what I love the most about it because I'm not going to fix them. They're, they're, they're old. It's never going to get better. Um, yeah. You just want to help them have a better quality of life until that day comes. Yeah. So like my goal as a nurse is to help them have a quality of life and to create this bond so that when it's their worst day ever, they're scared to death and they'll be like, I'm scared, but I know she got me. Right. That is the most like beautiful moment I could ever explain to you. Like when you know you can give someone that kind of peace in their scariest moment ever in their life. You know, it's very humbling. 
-hmm. It really is. I, I feel like it's a it's an honor. Just as someone brings someone into the world, I'm able to help someone leave gracefully and, and confidently. And to me, like as hard it is as it is to lose them after years of taking care of the same people, you know they had, you know you did your best. You know they had a good quality of life. You know you stood up for them, you knew you were their advocate, you knew that you did everything humanly possible. And that's what I love about being a nurse. I love it. I love it. If I could do my life over, I would just become a nurse. No shit. That's it. I would give up everything, be a nurse. Awesome. Yeah. So I guess you divorced the business successfully because you remarried a new profession. And you, you know what? what? I'm making as much money as a nurse as I was resting. So you know what? <laughs> you win win. And look, see this? This is the only thing that stops me from nurse. I had neck surgery. I don't know if you know that. You did? My neck. Yeah. I got my street cred, my wrestling cred right here. Wow. I, yeah. Um, I have my three, four, and five is a cage. I have okay. two prosthetic discs and I have two fusions. Jeez. Christ. Yeah. It was really bad. It was really, now, really was that bad. From, was that from one bump in particular or? No, just the. Just the constant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but it does, you know, it, it gets hard sometimes for me when I'm on the, when I'm um, on the floor as a nurse. So I tend to do, I've been migrating more towards management. Okay. Like I'm a nurse manager now, but right. it's not my love. Like I love being on the floor on with the floor. them, yeah. but I, you know, I have limitations now. So, and it is what it is, but well, yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy life. And to answer your sort of thing about the book, there'll be a lot of scared people. <laughs> oh, because you're not going to hold back, are you? <laughs> a lot of, there'll be a lot of unhappy people. Oh, uh, I don't think I ever of, pissed off. I don't think about it. Well, speaking of not holding back, I um, suppose your main storyline was with Tori Wilson. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously there was the scenes with Al Wilson, which was hilarious, but... The one everyone always asks about was the uh, bedroom scene. You and Tori, is it Armageddon? Oh, my God. What was it like filming yeah. that on pay-per-view? Oh, God. There's so many stories about that. Tell us. So we went to the hotel to do that scene. And again, Dawn, you do what you told me. I had one rule with the writers at WWE. From the first day I went there, I said, guys, because they sat me down, what will you do? What do you feel? I said, I don't care what you tell me to do. My job is to do it. Yeah. Said, but I have one condition. It can't be a cheap pop. If it's going to go somewhere, you have carb launch. Do whatever you want. I'll be there. Yeah. Don't even tell me till I get there. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Just write it. That was it. Because yeah. that's how I was raised in the business, right? You just do it. Yeah. So <laughs> that storyline came about. And um, I think that was more of a fantasy of many in the back than that was probably <laughs> part of the storyline. <laughs> um, so we did it. And I remember going back to the locker room and I, Tori and I went back. I come out of the girls' locker room and coming down the hallway, like I'm walking out the door, here, there's Hayes, Vince, and Paul Heyman walking up the hallway. And I go, oh, hey guys. And they just went. Oh, uh, uh Dawn? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, that creepy look, they all had the creepy look with the grin. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, what, what, what's up? I won't sell anything. I don't sell nothing. I'm like, hey, what's up? He goes, um, something, you know, about the scene. I go, oh, what? Was it not what you wanted? Right. No, no, it was. Vince goes, no, 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 no. It was, it was what we wanted. Just a little too much. Oh, wow. Of what we wanted. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? I, I wanted, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you see Hayes and, and Paul snickering. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Well, we 
can't use a lot of it. Wow. And I go, oh, oh, okay. It's none of it's, we need you to go back and redo it. No oh, well. shit. So we had to do that twice. Oh. Yeah. I was like, he's like, yeah, we can't show that on TV. And that's why they were going to originally show it on TV, but then they had to put it to the pay-per-view because even with the second, like they couldn't. Oh, it was too much. Mm -hmm. uh, too much. For that's TV. why they had to put it to the pay-per-view. Right. But you know, uh, back then, you know, it was a big deal, girl on girl, right? Now everybody, yeah, everyone's sleeping with everyone. I think James, James, did you enjoy that? <laughs> like said, well, you, you should see me trying to explain it to my children when they see it. Oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Nowadays, it's so like I was worried about that moment. You know, I have a yeah. 13 year old girl, daughter, and I have a 16 year old son. Wow, um, and I always worried about, like, oh god, one day they're gonna have to go on the internet. Yeah. And but thank God, like the world is so different now where it's not even a big deal. They're like, yeah, mom, I don't care. I'm cool because of it. My mother kissed another girl. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> right. Well, James, you got anything else before we finish? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Don, I could probably start a podcast for you, to be honest. I can uh, kick Renee off. Me and you start a podcast. I, I can um, talk forever. Do you see my crystals in the back? Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you about. So you've got your star, so I would like this to help promote love. it. See them? Yeah. Okay, so is that a new business venture you're in? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, well, let's, let's promote it. Let's put you lower. Let's so promote what it. I do is I do um, every weekend, um, I do like energy healing, like Reiki, energy healing, uh clearing of vibrations and med like meditating i have classes i teach i love it i help people get through their blockages of where they are at the moment uh -huh. um just so they could have a better like they can live their best quality life okay you know i know you probably think i'm a wacko no but it really works yeah. <laughs> we're on the same level we're in the same business remember I, all... oh, do you i uh so yeah. it's just met, it's it's metaphysical science. It's not hocus pocus. Okay. The story is this crystal has elements, right, to create it. Uh, right. So what is that? What is that? It's atoms being held together, which create an energy field and vibration, right? Okay. To hold yeah. it together, then creates matter. Anything that's uh, man-made or nature-made has a vibration because there's particles being held together. Right. And that creates an energy, right? Yeah. So because your body is created to never self-destruct, you can't hold your breath till you die. You can't hold yourself underwater until you drown. You have to use something in order to kill yourself because you're created to never self-destruct. The body's okay. amazing. The human body is amazing, okay? Like even your brain will create new pathways to continue to function. It's amazing. So, and what that is, they compensate. Your body will always compensate and, and change in some way uh -huh. to be able to exist the best it can. Right. Now, when that happens, whether it be environmental, illness, it could be a plethora of things, pollution, whatever. Your body, your chemistry changes to be able to function and exist within okay. whatever you're living in. Okay. But it may not, it's only for the moment it's gonna get you through. It's not necessarily healthy. So long-term, there's long-term effects of this, right? So like cortisol, you stress out, you have cortisol, right? We all know uh -huh. how horrible cortisol is, yeah. excess of cortisol. Right, so it's just, that's a perfect example. So you have excess stress, you're producing cortisol because that's going to help you function in the moment and exist. Okay. But if you have a ton of cortisol, well, constantly, 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 you know, there's a lot of bad effects. That's a whole nother science class, right? 
Yeah. So it's the same thing with everything, but we just may not know those chemicals or those reactions that are being created because we're existing in the moment. Right. So what happens is when we find these blockages, your body can't go back to a normal range because it has nothing to calibrate with. It only knows what it's living in now. So once you find where your blockages is, are, depending on it, there are different vibrations in different pieces. Like this would have a very different vibration than this, um, or this one, right? Okay. So when you have it in your environment, now your body is like, I want to be functioning normal, but I don't know how to get there. Okay. So when you're wearing it or it's in your, your area, it's like a calibrator. Your body's like, oh, that's where I'm supposed to be. That's healthy. So it kind of like will calibrate and bring you back. Wow. But if you don't change your environment, it's going to go back, right? So it just kind of brings you back to start. Once you're back at start, then the real healing can begin, whether it be emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever. Wow. Because therapeutic, and I believe in medicine, but medicine only treats symptoms. You can't cure problems if you don't stop, if you don't start where it begins. Right. 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 It's kind of like a, a drug addict who uses drugs to mask their problems. They got to go to the root and solve that problem, right? We need to go back to like where, what, what is going on? You may never even be able to put it to words, but if we can bring that vibration back, you start seeing it more clear. Right. And then you're able to make better decisions. It's almost like starting over. Like you're able to start over again from where you are and make your choices without a clouded brain. Oh. It's kind of like that. And then you rebuild your environment. And then when you create a new environment, consciously create a new environment for yourself mm. rather than unconsciously, because that's what got you in the mess. Consciously, then you're now in an environment that's more healthy and functional. And then you could be your best self. Okay, so give us the information on where we can um, find this stuff. Okay. Well, I do lives every uh, Saturday and Sunday. My, my, I'll give you my link. You can put it if you want. Um, yeah. Still oh, yeah. vibrations and healing. Okay. Yeah, I just I love it. I love it. It brings me so much peace, and I love just just being me. Like I don't have to fake it anymore. Yeah, I'm of faking it all the time. Right. It's such peace to just be like. See, this is who I am. I'm like, I, well, I don't mean to James, hurt anyone. No, me and James uh, appreciate you are who you are. And I'm sure all the fans <laughs> of my channel will appreciate you being on here. And I want to thank you so much for your time because uh, oh, I have a so lot of fond cool. memories of you. Smackdown, not so much, but you were definitely a bright spot. Oh, I love you. If oh, you ever come too. to Jersey, you have to come by. Okay. I had no, no, no. Well, I think I Jimmy Noble. Jimmy Noble used to call me Dirty Jersey all the time. Dirty Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I'm ever in Jersey, I'll make sure to hit you up and we'll. Uh... Yay! <laughs> uh, thank you so I'm much. I'm so John. happy you're doing well. I'm so happy you're doing well too. It's good to see you happy. Okay, thank be you. safe. Bye bye. bye.